。没有走完的路不会是终点，故事的走向是自己选择的坚持。这个故事的开头还算不错，相信过程，相信自己走过的路。那些最激动人心的冒险，从来不是单枪匹马的挑战。과거는이제서요내일이새로운시작입니다내경기가새로운도전입니다我们愿意为胜利付出许多代价，改变只是其中之一。어떠한사람이든현재에만족하지않고어떠한사람이든제자리걸음을하지않는다过去的荣耀就存留在记忆中。这一抹红色要照亮未来。为之付出的心血越多，收获的果实才越甘甜。赛场上的事怎能尽如人意？我只想追求无愧于心。保持微笑，胜利总会专顾你。在尝过赢得一切的滋味之后，你绝对不会甘心做第二名。尖毛和利刃是勇者的武器。也有最坚硬的盾和扬起风帆的大旗。如果翻不过这座山，他们就听不到你的故事。这个故事的结局将由我们来谱写。为了无悔，为了胜利，为了站在世界这边。Uzi's at the top of the world, but we're at the top of the LPL Battle Arena in Shanghai. Meanwhile, though, on your screen, from Chengdu, the heart of hip hop, hip hop, excuse me, in China, it's the OMG Arena. We're opening up with TOP Sports Gaming versus OMG. I am your host today, Indiana Frost here in black, doing my best dash impression. Ooh! And I got Raz, Barinto Muhammad next to me. Does that make me Jat? Is that what I am now?、Uh, if you're only going to break down into Jat stats, you got any stats for me? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> That's totally fine because we do have our match of the week today, Raz. So get excited because if you're going to stick around, we've got a lot of hours to pump out. But today will be match of the week between Team WE and Edward Gaming. So it's a little bit of a slow start. Some OMG, some TOP,、oh, yeah. but we are doing the、uh, the global trot around China. We will eventually make our way over into Xi'an and see these two titans clash. And of course, as you mentioned, got that warm up match going into match of the week. EDG WE, the players on your screen. I like the whole video we do coming into a lot of the day's matchups because you hear EDG saying, "Once you get first place, you never want to be second." So they have a lot pr to prove going into the split. We'll talk about it as the day goes on. But this is just the beginning of the road and the beginning of summer split. And we can go ahead and take a look at the standings as well because Edward Gaming still not doing.、Uh You know, so poorly in terms of the standings, where it's a very different story for Team WE. So, looking over at the Western Conference, sitting fat and happy, two and zero. Wells, Team WE, one and three. One and three is something we did not expect because bringing Condi back in there, the best jungler 2017, bar none, and then he comes in and he is definitely rusty. So, when it comes down to Team WE, they were kind of expecting that, bringing in a whole slew of players. So they're just trying to figure out what their identity actually is. Yeah, trying to shake that off. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Conference, it's all about Invictus Gaming. We haven't gotten a lot of game time from them, but still sitting at the head of that conference with three and zero. Yeah, we go. I mean, we haven't gotten to see as much IG. Hopefully, next week we get to see as much IG as possible. They're so damn exciting to watch. Rookie is still on top of his game. Four solo kills already, so he's ready for the next week. And again, reminder though today that it's all about the Western Conference. We're going to take a look at today's schedule. It's OMG versus TOP. Then over to Xi'an, our match of the week: Edward Gaming versus Team WE. And then finally, Rogue Warriors versus Fun Plus Phoenix. So you got the up and comers, and then you have the legacy of EDG versus Team WE, and you have the current performers of Rogue Warriors and Fun Plus. Fun Plus is going to be an interesting one to see if they can shape up well enough to go up against Rogue Warriors. And the fact of the matter is, is that Fun Plus Phoenix versus Rogue Warriors might actually be our most competitive match today. Now, Rogue Warriors really haven't been challenged. Yes, they took their victory over Snake, and FPX have been kind of duking back and forth. But I actually think that might be the closest series that we have with Team WE's most recent form. Yeah, 100%. One thing that I'm always interested in is the fact that Fun Plus is just always increasing their arsenal. They're the team that's still adding more players. Time and time again, bringing in Alex as a sub jungler, and just today announcing that they bring in Septed, an LCK's 
Superstar when he was playing in the LCK, went towards Turkey, and now he's with us in the LPL. Speaking of globe trotting, that guy's I know, right? Those Good flights. 80 days, man, around the world. So he's here today, and it's, it, it's always a question mark if he's going to perform, but there is certainly a fire underneath the starting roster, and if they do not perform today, the next day, that they do have strong players behind them. And, you know, kind of looking at the holistic schedule, Raz, it feels like kind of the the theme of the day is junglers. Like, think of how many junglers that we have sitting on the bench yes. alone for all of these teams. Edward Gaming, you have Haro and Clearlove. Clearlove now being the starter. Uh, Team WE, you've got Pepper and Condi, these rotation doors. Uh, Mountain joining OMG. Uh, Alex now joining. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it never ends. And uh, definitively, like, I know not to put you on the spot, okay. but is there, like, a top three? These are the best three junglers in the LPL right Ooh. now, and are any of these junglers on that list? I would say immediately, of Clear Love is showcasing great signs in the first few days. Did you just open up with Clear Love? I'm going to open it up with Clear Love because I've been always wanting to see Clear Love come back. And I'm already starting to get excited. It's not like that KT excitement where you've already seen a whole bunch of failure. We're, in, we're still in the LPL. Domestically, he's been strong in the LPL. And so far, he's had a first few weeks that have been phenomenal. I'm even going to cut it out. I don't even want to hear number two and number three if we're oh going to open with Clear Love. We're going to go ahead and take a look back at Chengdu. Again, this is uh, the heart of hip-hop in China. If you've never been to Chengdu, and I know, Raz, you have. It's a very fresh, young atmosphere yes. as a Chinese city. The best thing about it is that you go into some of their fashion districts and it's so well embedded in their historical ancient artifact it's great to see and it's just hilarious then that omg is the team of chungju i can't think of a better city for the bad boys of the lpl the, the k-pop stars if you will yeah this styling on the rift and you can see style in some of these players icon makes so much sense i feel like when they were making the decision of which city to place them icon is the first person that's like send me to chengdu immediately so i am as close as possible to the fashion district. Signed it himself. Meanwhile, across from them, T.O.P. on your roster right there. It looks like Goon is going to be the starter for the mid lane. Again, a, a couple of roster adjustments, mixing it up, but finding recent success over Team WE. This is no longer the last place team in the LPL. And what's interesting, yeah, you mentioned that because you're right. They took down Team WE, bringing in the new coach for the team. BSYY was with them to begin with, but here's OMG to start. And this is the big thing, though. Xiang, Mountain formerly of AHQ from LMS, Icon, Xuan Xuan P, and Five. Formerly of Vichy Xuan Xuan, so we get to see if he performs today going up against T.O.P., Mar in the top lane, XX, Goom, Cho Cho, and Cat rounding up that bottom lane. And of course, the big name that everyone's going to gravitate towards when they see T.O.P.'s lineup is going to be Marn in that top lane. And do you think he's lived up to, you know, uh, MSI, MVP, Marn that we know and love from SKT's era? I'm going to say yes. The reason for it, and a lot of people will question that, is because he draws so much attention from, of course, the fans who come out to watch him, but also the players Those in the damn Marin. game. Those say Icon. Oh, they'll say Icon. There are a few people out there. But, you know, Chengdu's <laughs> remaining loyal. That's fair. Uh, but here we go. They're the Marin fans There you out go. There. You got your signs. But the, the, the thing is, strategically, you go up against T.O.P., and there's always just an essence of Camp Marin at all times. He brings in his carries, he brings in the Renektons, the Kennens, and he always has pressure in the top lane. And recently he's been kind of pooling that pressure and moving it elsewhere. He's not split pushing. He's coming in for team fights out because it feels like this team has realized that he needs to buff up the team if they have a chance of victory and that's been the name of the game for the team. So on the other side, T.O.P., if it's all about the top lane, if it's all about, you know, former SKT MVP mm -hmm. Marn, then if you look at OMG, the name that we kept repeating was Icon. Is this mid versus top? Who's going to carry harder? Are there different elements for OMG to find a lake here? Look. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Chelly, this is where I come out and say, Chelly had a okay. phenomenal... No, 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 no. No, no, I Back have to, to me. say it. Give me I all this camera. Say it. You cannot... You're staying on me. You're staying on me. All right, Chelly had a phenomenal game last time round in his Ash. You cannot, in an OMG game, when they have Mountain, a superstar jungler from the LMS, who Clement himself has said has higher highs yes. than Karsa, yes. Icon, the hitman of the LPL, and the first goddamn name out of your mouth is Chelly? But this is upset Raz, because he's not playing. It's Swan I'm Swan upset P. Fraskirin, so... But this is, we're going to get into I'm it, actually, because you're right. You're, ac you're actually correct. No, that, I'm moving my seat away. <laughs> come back to me. But you're right in the sense that 
Icon has always been the mainstay. He's bring out his LeBlanc, and the, the name of the game, whenever he comes out and LeBlanc casts it in, he comes out, has an exceptional game, but they still lose. So you do need to bring in all, uh, other elements. Mountain is supposed to be that Okay, person. I see what you're saying. I yes. asked for the star, and you're telling me the cherry on top was Chelly. I they definitely need danced around your question. Yeah, I definitely that's, did that. That's fine. Give some Chelly love. He did have, what, 51% damage share on the Ash the most recent time that we saw yes. him? And it feels like OMG are in a bit of a resurgence. Yes, and that's what I really love to see from OMG, is that they are bringing in more players. Mountain's doing really well. I'm upset that uh, Chelly isn't playing in this first game, but you know what? We'll get to see more from Swamp Swamp P. Now you heard it from Raz, and we're going to go ahead and send it over to the casters for OMG versus T.O.P. Gaming. And here we go. T.O.P. taking on OMG in Chengdu. I am very excited to get into this. T.O.P. is a team that is starting to finally climb up in the standings. They're starting to finally find their footings after the disaster that was Spring Split. Marin coming in, able to actually put a pressure point for the team, has allowed them to finally grow. And now this is a team that actually could be looking at Summer Split with some good numbers on the board. Yeah, pretty much. T.O.P. only won three sets the entirety of spring, but they're also already starting off with an unexpected win over W.E. back in Xi'an. And now we're going straight into the band picks right here. The first thing to note, OMG actually going for the blue side. Now, they do usually prefer the red side in terms of drafting to leave that counter pick for Icon in the mid lane. Very interesting to see this choice out of OMG to deliberately pick blue side coming into this patch 811 as you can see on the top of your screen again omg was just one series ahead of top in spring split so for going off of spring performances we're not expecting great things out of this matchup but top they've been practicing over the break omg we have to see have doing the same have been doing the same thing and now we're looking to the growth of these teams as we get into summer First thing I want to see here is Mountain picking up one of the top tier junglers. Graves is open on the map now, and every time we've seen Graves, it's been putting up massive numbers. And this is what Mountain was selected on OMG to do, to be that secondary carry. But instead, they're going for another carry jungler option in the Nocturne. We've been seeing this pick do a lot of work, especially with the Paranoia Baron Sneak. Yeah, you just saw Mountain on your screen right now, working with his new team. Obviously, the newer player to join this, uh, second now only to Xuan Chuan P, who's now starting with his first game today for OMG. But T.O.P., they see that that 80 carry Lucian is still open as the timer runs out. Let's see if they decide to prioritize it and then look for their own jungle. They don't need to go for it just yet, so they might wait until that second round before the bans, but how else do T.O.P. continue to flesh out their comp? T.O.P. predictable as always. They're putting a lot of faith into their bot lane. And every time they had a first pick, they have gone for the Lucian when open. So it's very predictable that they would go for this. And of course, the second jungler, the biggest bad guy on the rift so far, the Scuttle King himself, Graves, I think is the champion you want to lock down if open. Yeah, he's going to be lighting a cigar on the back of his barrel, double-barreled shotgun. The bearded lady to start chasing down OMG. That's might be a bit scary for Mountain, but oh no, this is interesting. The Ash hover out of Mountain right now. So Raz was mentioning on the desk, Chelly, in OMG's last game. set against OMG, played one of the best sets we've ever seen him play on that Ash, almost single-handedly carrying a win for OMG. But now, it looks like OMG are sticking to the strategy, but bringing in Chuan Chuan P, previously oh. of Royal Club. Royal never give up sub, and even uh, Vici Gaming before that. Yeah, just to... Go back to the draft a little bit. I love this Tom Kench pick because it takes away protection from a double AD comp that TLP is running, and it also provides catch potential. When you're going for a Nocturne, you want to kill targets as fast as possible. This is the meat grinder composition, but there's two ways you can play it. You can play it with the AOE, or you can play it with the pick. And OMG are firmly onto the pick composition. Tom Kench right there, enabler for their own team comp, takes a lot away from TLP. Great pick. TLP, you're seeing in this patch, they're taking their support early because they know there's not enough protection options. Of course, we'll see how that composition works out for them with this pick composition. Uh, last time we saw Xuan Xuan P in the LPL was 436 days ago with Vici Gaming when he was relegated down into the LSPL. We have not seen him in the LPL since, so finally making his return to the big stage, hoping to bring some stability to the roster. We'll see if he can do it 
As that Ash arrow is a great way to set up for his team to collapse and look for those picks that you mentioned. But now it's CLP. They see this strategy as well. It's a very clear read. How do they decide to round <laughs> this out with Braum? Locked up and now two mid lanes banned away from Icon. Taking everything that's blind pickable away from Icon. He is the assassin player in our league so far. However, he hasn't been doing that well this split in terms of assassins. Only one win overall. And the big question for OMG has never been their laning phase. They have great solo laners, yeah. but it's about their team fight. What does their 5v5 team fight actually look like in the end? So I do want to see Icon move towards picks that has made him successful in terms of his mages. That Those have been Cassiopeia and Lulu. Unfortunately, both yeah. are already out of the question, so he's going to have to come up with something new. A Cassiopeia locked in for T.O.P. as they're taking a fairly standard composition so far, saving counter pick for, surprise, surprise, the world champion Marin. So that means that Xiong will have to show his blind pick here with these next two. Icon does get the luxury of counter pick in the mid lane, but we already alluded to it a little bit on the desk. Is the game plan for OMG just Camp Marin? Camp that primo name? Well, I don't think it's going to be about Marin at all. It's actually going to be about the rest of the map. That's the reason you pick game plan. He doesn't need to teleport to go anywhere. He can just drop his ult and someone will die on the map. So what OMG is expecting here is for T.O.P. to go for the the Dr. Mundo, that's a pick that offers them a front line, a way to keep their carries safe and to zone off the enemy team. So they're saying, okay, we can just go game plank, farm it out in the top lane. Come mid game, we're going to have a lot of burst potential. We're going to have a lot of potential to instantly congregate on any point on the map and pick people off. So OMG, they have their heads in the right place. They've actually successfully pulled off a 5v5 composition, which is a lot of times what they failed to do. Yeah. Now it's T.O.P.'s chance to answer. I do expect the, uh, the Mundo. Yeah, and historically that has been one of T.O.P.'s weaknesses in the past, getting caught out of position. Cat loves to aggressively ward into the enemy jungle to provide tracking on the enemy jungler. Um, and sometimes that can lead to problems when Chocho -Cho is farming a lane in the bottom lane, when Goom doesn't have push pressure in the mid lane. But now we've got that Cassiopeia into Vladimir. Ooh. Now we've got that Mundo top lane as... Let's see if we actually get some last second swaps again. We're waiting to the 22nd timer. So to see what that's going to be. The Vladimir is very good into a double uh, AD carry composition like T.O.P. is running. When it comes to the late game, your E damage does go through multiple targets. However, the problem is it does present itself as a weak lane compared to Goon. So Goon is going to have an easy time. He has the Graves as well. It's about how far can T.O.P. push level 1s to 5. That's where they're most strong on the map. We'll absolutely have to keep an eye on that. Of course, Mundo not going to be doing too much without that sadism, but as the coaches shake hands and make their way backstage, we prepare to load onto the rift for this game one between T.O.P. and OMG. The second to last team of the LPL taking on the third to last team of the LPL as of spring split, but summer has finally sprung, and now we're seeing which of these teams have actually learned and grown. OMG are clearly trying. They brought in Chuan Chuan P after Chelly had an exceptional performance, so Hopefully there's something Chuan Chuan P can bring to make up for missing that star player. And even Mount coming in for OMG to round out their jungle pool even more. And if you're wondering, Chuan Chuan Xuan Xuan P was formerly known as P P Xuan. And uh -huh. what that means in Chinese is that Xuan Xuan is a little bit naughty, and it used to mean naughty naughty Xuan. Yeah. So he's going down a little bit on the naughty meter, but uh, you know, hopefully he can bring his performance up to compensate for that. <laughs> the reason I think that they're bringing him in is just to try out to find someone that can replace the impact that SMLZ had on OMG. Previously, in 2017, before they went to Rift Rivals, they were flawless with SMLZ. OMG has not been able to secure themselves that second big carry. We'll have to see if this is going to be Xuan Chuan P who can fill that void or if OMG will be able to find their strength elsewhere as we prepare to load onto the rip for this game out of Chengdu. T.O.P. the Travelers in the stadium of OMG trying to bring their fans down and rebuild the legacy that Dan Gaming and T.O.P. brought when this roster joined into the LPL. Now, just watching those lineups, I have to say it's gonna be a rough early game from OMG. None of their lanes are doing particularly well and their jungler is also gonna be behind. So it's about how smoothly can they transition to mid. Oh, looks like we've already got a bit of a skirmish over there. Even the 
the newcomers of TOP are bringing on enough, enough fans to present some volume. Now, we did just see an invade from TOP to spot out the blue buff of Mountain and try to track where that Nocturne starts, and even an early sweeper out of XX to deny vision in this jungle. TOP are the ones trying to keep Nocturne in the darkness. Now, TOP has done this repeatedly. They did it both times against WE in their series, and it's a very successful strategy. They actually purposefully pick their champions for a strong level one. You look at the Braum, you look at the Lucian, and of course the Graves is the cherry on top, the strongest early game jungle imaginable. So they've been doing this over and over again, and props to their coach for giving them an actual in-game strategy, which is the thing a lot of bottom teams actually lack. That's an invade, setting up XX with the red buff. We'll see how he decides to maneuver around with this Graves. You already mentioned the early one through five strength for TOP as Mountain clears away his Raptor camp and immediately rushes over to blue. He's sitting on top of a ward, so this is a lot of knowledge that T.O.P. are running with right now. And XX is on this side of the map as well. XX's job is to deny every single scuttle away from Mountain. Now, Mountain might not know that ward is even there. He's gonna find out if he stays there a little long longer, but guess not. And actually, after the scuttle, XX can actually just walk into Mountain's camps. Just gonna play it safe instead. Doesn't have any backup from the lanes yet. Goong doesn't look to be pushing in that mid lane with his Electrocute and top lane still even between Marin and Xion. So XX, he just swaps right back over down to the bottom side. Looks like he's trying to get a track onto where Mountain is going. And like you said, oh, this could be a bait. But right. Mountain doesn't want to contest. He knows that he's already very far behind and is most likely tracked as well. So XX actually ends up losing a little bit of time waiting around for Mountain. But if you look at his entire jungle, it hasn't been touched at all. So he can pretty much go back, come back onto the map and have a very strong second clear. But what he's doing now is to elect to go for a strong level three, probably look for a gank somewhere, look to deny Mountain a little bit, and then come uh, go, go back base, come up on the map strong again. And this is something that we've talked about being one of the strengths of Mountain for OMG, that he has some of the most creative gank paths in the LPL, in the world, and is well known for finding his way into enemy backlines when he really shouldn't. So already to see XX try and track that and preempt that sort of trade speaks well of TOP's preparation coming into this match. Something interesting to note is that Icon was actually able to outplay the fight in terms of the mid lane and actually push Goon out. It seemed like a level 2 trade that where something went wrong from Goon, probably did miss his Q, wasn't able to follow up with the Twin Fangs efficiently. So actually Icon coming in with a much better trade and forcing, uh, forcing Goon to go back without the tier and just coming out with the Dark Seal. Mm. Of course, this is to be expected of the hitman in the mid lane. He doesn't have that name just because he takes contracts and sometimes he kills people. He kills everyone. <laughs> Pretty much. Hey. He doesn't need a contract. It's, it's, uh, it's pro bono, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just doing it for the fun of it. Uh, this is the thing about Icon. He's actually been having a terrific split individually. He's been able to win out a lot of situations where most of us think he shouldn't be able to. And uh, his games on Zoe have been absolutely stellar and something a lot of teams are banning away from. Ooh, Goong actually forcing out the Tides of Blood. Burns through a lot of mana. He's got that full Corrupting Pot and Dark Seal. Icon is using his last health potion, and then he has to rely on Doran's shield for sustain. But look at this. Mountain is trying to invade. The jungle's already been cleared. He just places a ward to see if he can track XX. Oh, there's no way he's trying to invade. That's a really common ward we see placed by uh, Clear Love as well, is just to track when the enemy jungle is going to come in for a gank, so that way Vladimir can decide or choose to play more toward the uh, the left side of the map. He knows he's going to be safe coming on that edge. So that's basically a ward that sets up the solo, the 1v1 for Icon in the mid lane. Just to keep Icon safe so he knows whether or not he can all in. Meanwhile, Mountain, as is expected with his brilliant pathing, waiting for the respawn timer of that Wolves. We'll keep an eye on his continued pathing as now XX back on the map has taken Gromp. He's still hanging out on that bottom side of the map. And look at that. There's actually a control ward on uh, that bottom half for Goong. But the spot scuttle respawns to the top side, and Mountain is already on top of it. Yep, so XX definitely knows that Mountain's probably on the top side, goes in for an uncontested gank. They can be very aggressive uh, with this type of a maneuver right here. Even pushing the wave all the way in to try and deny Icon some CS. He's getting close to level 6, I believe. Should be taken over relatively soon. Here but comes here's five. five. Goong is on the wrong side of the wall. Immediate flash, but Exhaust catch, catches him. Hammo 
Cannon Barrage and Hemo Plague. Icon needs some damage, gets stunned. XX with the Ignite walks off, and in the end, no kills. Overall, a great trade of summoners, though. They do get the flash away from Cassiopeia, so that means that Goon is not able to play aggressive in this lane anymore. If he hangs back, then that does give more chances for Icon and Mountain to influence the river sections. For now, though, that does mean that T.O.P. will now get back on the map. Tier picked up for Goon, so he has a little bit more sustain. Lots of vision set up from OMG after that roam. They've got Scuttlecrab, they've got a defensive ward for Xiong. And they're starting to set up some vision on the bottom half. Cat's trying to contest that, though, as he steps into the tri-bush of five. But not able to make anything happen. We do see five with a little bit of the experience lead as well, picking up a bit of minions on the bottom side. So they should be able to control this wave quite easily. Uh, Ash, always a very strong in-lane champion, has pretty much the second highest attack range of any marksman at this point, sitting at 600. Yeah, so now we're at that level one to five mark that we were talking about. Chuan Chuan P is actually close to level six. So he could try and scare away the bottom lane of T.O.P. with that enchanted crystal arrow. And suddenly that early strength that we predicted for T.O.P. Didn't really happen. Yeah. yeah. Good good early jungle tracking. Two scuttle crabs to the one for Mountain, but you gotta make something more snowball out of that. Yeah, Mountain actually pathed incredibly well. He avoided conflict at all costs, kept his mid laner alive as well. And the big thing is that Icon was able to force Goom back at level two, and that really took away a lot of the pressure in terms of the map. That's, that was the unexpected factor. Usually you look at a Cassiopeia like this, you say she wants to go back for a tier rather than for a dark seal. And just the simple outplay of mechanics from Icon able to stabilize the early game. But for OMG, I don't think this necessarily means that their engine has started. They still need to find the first kill and a big part of it about it is the kills from the bottom lane. Because if you free up the bottom lane, they can send Ash arrows elsewhere on the map and they can Whoa. send Tom Catch. Woo! Mountain actually thinks he's got this here. Flash followed by Flash. Go he's got a in. lot of damage and a gets solo a solo kill. kill. First blood. Goon will try to chase him down, but the arrow from downtown. It went all the way. It oh. went all the distance. Mountain is ticking down, but Trial kills him back up. OMG with a double kill. Did you see the no look from Mountain dodging out on the petrifying gaze at the last moment as well? What an incredible outplay. And Boy, I don't think XX saw that coming at all. Chuan Chuan P from the bottom lane Ooh. takes the Hail Mary shot and is able to save his jungler and find the assist on the follow-up kill. Good attempt from Goong to turn it around, but holy, what a shot! Yeah, that was incredible in terms of their coordination right there. Uh, if that arrow didn't land, I still think Mountain would have gotten away, but they probably would not secure the kill on the Cassiopeia. So, you know, Trench MP, you know, he's turned turned down the naughty dial, but he's got his accuracy. Yeah, oh, Xiong's training ooh. with Marin. Cannon Barrage. It's getting very he's able low. He's heal himself up. Marin, ooh, misses the briefcase. Luckily, Xiong doesn't have to be a part of that meeting, so he's able to head back and walk away with his life for now. He doesn't have teleport, yeah. so this is an opportunity for Marin to try and control the lane a little bit. If Marin hit that Q, he probably would have died right there. But let's go ahead and look down onto Mountain's play again. Catches out XX in the jungle with the Shrine Orb. Goes in immediately. Actually W's the slow from the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, from, the, from the smoke screen and continues Whoa. to chase onto it. That's incredible to watch. The barrier from Goong to try and survive, oh. like you said, Mountain with the no-look turnaround to avoid the petrifying gaze. He's seen that play before. He knows how this works. Oh yeah, Mountain isn't here to flirt, man. And that he's, was, that was he's no hesitation going in as well, hitting the Scryer's Bloom and then immediately saying, I can all in this guy. Yeah, knew his damage really well. Most junglers would not be as confident at going in on graves like that. And I think that speaks a little bit to the experience difference between Mountain and XX on the Graves. You might expect Graves does massive damage with a double longsword against especially a Nocturne, but he panicked. He dashed away, which means not only does he miss that gap close, he also misses the reload and another one, but another, oh, another shot one is down. fired on the way. No way! Oh no my. way! Seriously? He hits it! The paranoia into the mid what? lane and another kill on Tagook. I guess that's why Xuan Xuan P is on the roster right now. Is that what he's been practicing the entire split? This man has not for played two. in Spring Split. I'm gonna start taking down numbers. That's two for two. 
And you know, th this usually doesn't happen. That's why I said you need to uh, you need to actually start the snowball in the bot lane so you can get Ash using her arrows elsewhere. But when Ash is fine in lane, she can start doing that before anything ha happens in the bot lane. Uh, when she has that type of accuracy, you're actually pretty comfortable with her just doing it. What a <laughs> shot! Twice in a row, Xiong is just single-handedly holding down Marin in the top lane, you know, as you do, and then, oh, I guess we're picking up kills. Great. That's how you want all of your solo queue games to go, but holy cow. OMG. <laughs> what is that? They're now 3,000 gold ahead with that first brick. Two assists onto Chuan Chuan P. Mountain with two kills and Icon 1-0-1. Oh, Finished Proto Belt. Serrated Dirk also picked up for Mountain. This is only going to get worse. If T.O.P. don't keep an eye on that Ash and get a timer for that Enchanted Crystal Arrow cooldown. Yeah, and they should look for ways to punish in the bot lane because that's a crucial ultimate missing from their arsenal. So I would like to watch XX just go down there and start to put T.O.P. on the board because they're falling very far behind right now and they're going up against a tempo catch oriented team from OMG. And if that type of team gets ahead, like they're going to kill Goon on cooldown. Oh, yeah. Like what is the Cassiopeia even going to do at this point? They're starting to try and set the clock as Enchanted Crystal Arrow is back up. Chuan Chuan P pushes the wave in. Ducks out of vision. Already you can see there's a defensive ward down in that bottom bush. I think it might have actually just faded underneath Chuan Chuan P as he places a control ward to deny it. So much power. But with the tier 1, look at that. Goom has to hover against <laughs> his tier 2 and all of that jungle threat that Graves might have had at surprising a Nocturne or coming up behind the Vladimir is suddenly gone. He's trying to reclaim control, but look at the wards. To get back into the mid lane, he has to move through vision, move through a control ward of Icon, or try to push up through that top side. The next big move here for OMG is really transitioning their mid and jungle toward the bot side. Goong at this point cannot follow. I think XX is going to be zoned out of his own jungle. So once they get this blue, once they push out the mid wave, that's the next move I expect them to make. And it's about how T.O.P. can respawn because they still do have that teleport on Marin. They can look to equalize the game and they do have a lot of big ultimates in terms of their damage dealing as well. A lot of AoE CC coming out. So this is going to be the next flashpoint. It's going to be heavily in OMG's favor, but it could be an opportunity for T.O.P. to make a play as well. well. Already the Dragon gets rushed down by T.O.P. They get themselves the pulse for the timer of blue buff and are able to catch OMG, unable to defend it, so they find themselves with that Cloud Dragon. Here comes the play. Win. But like you said, they're already stacked up. Chuan Chuan P is showing himself in the bottom lane against the minion wave. They can see that he's down here, and Goong is literally hiding behind his <laughs> Tier 2 turret. He knows. But look at that, the bottom lane is missing. Chocho -cho actually just completed his recall. He's finished Blade of the Ruined King, but this is not a safe place to be. In fact, there's nobody even here to defend it. They're just going to push into this tier one turret, and as four members of OMG respond, T.O.P. find themselves with their pants down back in base. And the big question here is, what do T.O.P. actually equalize on the map? Because if you look at the top lane, sure, Mundo's got the wave push, but the mid lane was still taken by Shi Yang. So OMG, this gold dis distribution for them is stellar. Like, they didn't lose anything for grouping up and making that push. While on TLP side, they don't get anything in return. So you're seeing the gold actually starting to drift apart. It was 3k at the start after those two kills. But now after that map play where TLP get nothing, it's up to it's up to 4k now. It's almost 5 in fact. Yeah, starting to look a little bit scarier. Recall just completed for Xiong is with the bottom tier 1 going down. Chuan Chuan P engages a lane oh, swap. Oh, he's a 3 for 3! He's managing to hit oh. Marin! 3 out of 3 as he tags it down. Devourer is ready. Even though he's got the flash, he's pulled back in into Icon's waiting it? arms. The 5-man assist in front of the Rift Herald. Chuan Chuan P. Holy cow! That's what hours of practice tool can do, ladies and gentlemen, as Cat steps up to try and defend this vision. And also, Schwan Schwan P sidestepping that Winter's Bite looking rather smooth. This is the most co er ordinated that I have ever seen OMG play. And I actually do think it has a lot to do with Mountain. Uh, OMG is a team that, oh, but let's look at the fight first. Yeah, that's going to be a knockup. The save on the Schwan Schwan P. He's nearly stunned. Mountain flashes away. He's also nearly Here stunned, but Goong is trying to catch up. Mountain dodges one on the Miasma. Left. Finally dies, but Goong in the pit. He's got flash and barrier teleport gets Marin back in but it's four versus five and there's no smite ready for Mountain to try and contest this because he's dead Goong tries to finish it off but Xiong steps up and forces Goong out of the pit this is chaos yeah I actually thought Goong would still try to use the petrifying gaze but instead they're uh, fine to walk away with a single kill back onto T.O.P. 
was probably biting off a little more than they could chew without three ultimates on OMG, still trying to take the Rift Herald right there. I was getting a little bit excited after the 3v3, after the shot calling and the new face we're seeing for yeah. from OMG, but still a bit of the old tendencies creeping back in again. Trying to bite off a little more they can chew. They're still going to end up with the Herald, however. The chaos in team fights, as I think we've come to know and love from ONG. As, yeah, like you said, recall completed from TOP to defend, and Herald will now be picked up. Mountain is back just in time. It was all part of the plan. Even Smite used to lock it down. And he passes it over to Icon in the mid lane. Now, all of the tier ones except for top have already been taken. And the arrow's ready once again for Schwan Schwan P. You can't. This is just too close. That's just me at that point. Yep. I don't think they're going to try for it necessarily. 2v2 isn't necessarily their strong suit at this point. I really like how the Herald went on to Icon as well. Because Icon in the future is going to be the main split pusher. And to be honest, Nocturne can come in at any moment. He doesn't need to be in the lane itself to, to drop that. So I do like the, uh, the idea of handing over the Herald to Vladimir. <laughs> Sean P with his finger on the laugh emote. He's just having a chuckle in that top lane just in case he's in vision. But look at Goom. He's walking back to the bottom tier 2 while Marin holds mid because there's no one to keep him safe. He went Rylai's Rush after the tier because he needs the health to try and survive a little bit longer if he does get tagged by another arrow. Yeah, and this is uh, pretty sad. We see this a lot when Cassiopeia's fall behind incredibly hard. We've seen it with Rookie, Invictus Gaming versus RNG in the uh, playoffs as well. If Cassiopeia loses her tower, there really is nothing for her to do on the map. She doesn't have the mobility to really be a split pusher. She can't clear enough. She has no escape. So she has to hug her tower, basically. And that just gives so much room for OMG to operate. They can group up with Icon whenever they want, and they can clear out the vision on one side of the map pretty yeah. easily. Oh, there's the there's arrow, another arrow. Once again. No is way, four no for way. Four? Oh, oh, it just barely misses. But still, the fight breaks out. Mountain dies again. As Goong is able to chase him down, Icon can't move through the Miasma to catch up to Chocho, who walks away with his life. So T.O.P. are actually able to escape this time when the pick composition is not successful. But look at those ultimates from OMG. They threw everything in the kitchen sink to try and get that kill. Yeah, and I was actually pretty surprised that Goong didn't even have to use his ultimate to cut off the ramp, basically. So OMG went in, but... Only Mountain was really doing any damage at this point, and uh, that was a bit of a failed execution in terms of trying to chase someone upwards through a ramp into through a Cassiopeia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a great idea. Not to mention Marin didn't have teleport, so OMG seems to have had the timer for that, tried to play the 5v4, but Marin just took the bottom tier one in answer, so that will give some gold back over to TOP with OMG's botched attempt. We're still waiting for that Rift Herald to be used from Icon, though. It's about just about uh, a third of the duration left, and still hasn't gotten the chance to use it quite yet, but Cat and Chocho -Cho still defending up here in this top tier one. Now they know they're a bit safer now that that arrow cooldown is ready. Now, OMG's composition does need to speed the pace up. They're not terribly powerful in terms of the absolute late game. They don't have enough sustained damage to actually deal with Mundo. And Nocturne is just pretty much there for his ultimate. He goes on one target and dies immediately. So this is a time of team composition that you want to pick up the pace and continuously snowball. So it's actually very detrimental when they lose a big gap like that. Well, that's what we're seeing right now. Icon walks top and drops down that Rift Herald. Looks like he's walking it all the way up to the oh, tier two, a, a full double. charge. Gets a lot of damage, and Chuan Chuan P follows up to finish it off. Four turrets to one. All of the tier ones are now gone from T.O.P. and now the top tier two. And though the dragon was taken by T.O.P. on the other side of the map, it's slowly getting smaller and smaller and darker and darker. Can I say something? Yeah. That was not worth it. <laughs> no, the <laughs> dragon for two turrets. Yeah, like, they, they have really no use for the ocean at this point, so going down there and uh, basically putting all their oh, resources no, there. Oh no, it's a trap! There 80%. they go! They set a bait in front of the Baron spawn, they find a kill onto Cat. And that's the danger about this composition. They actually take Baron no extremely way. fast. No way! Mundo is even no. getting in there. Blade of the Rune King for the slow. He's got Flash, but remember, he's also Mundo with Spirit Visage and level 2 Sadism, so he's able to walk away. But now that is four out of five arrows hitting. And Chuan Chuan P is still just ready with his team. They're grouped up in front of the Baron. They're actually going to start it off yeah. here. XX is behind the pit. He's got a Control Ward and sees this happening. OMG 
decide to back away. It's still very early into this game. Without the paranoia, they really shouldn't try this, but I do like the idea of setting up baits early. They are starting their item spikes with a Blade of the Ruin King and also the paranoia. So their chances of rushing down a Baron are actually incredibly high. Yeah. Like, they can definitely do that. This is a play that we've seen EDG execute and be successful on. So, TLP, you know, they themselves are kind of the uh, Rush Baron team as well, well, like we're seeing on the map. Speak of the devil. <laughs> I don't know if that was an on purpose Baron like Rush. It, it appears like that it. he was just trying to clear out that ward as TOP try to clear out most of the vision of OMG on that side of the map. Goong even dropping the Miasma just to try and charge that tier. Because right now it's just tears for Goong. He's 0 and 2. <laughs> He's 10 CS down. Spellbinder is finished for Icon along with that Proto Belt. He's going to find a target and destroy them yeah. in this upcoming fight. Not to mention the Nocturne in the front. And if you get through the two of those, there's a Gangplank and an Ash. There's so much threat out of OMG. Yeah, OMG, if they execute the team fight correctly, they should be able to pick off a single target relatively easily. I think as long as the Ash Arrow doesn't land onto Marin, they have pretty much an open field to uh, pick their targets from. So it's actually fairly easy for OMG to execute it, and I think they should take over most of the map control. TOP, at this point, their only piece that can move around on the map freely is the Mundo Marin. Like, if you look at the map, there really isn't anything that cuts down his damage. Ooh, Thornmail also finished. Actually. There's Icon. That's the paranoia. What? Oh, what? How the did he... heck? What? That's not even possible. How? Hold on. He was on the bottom half How of the river. How did he know he was going to flash? And then... <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> okay, he's five out of six. This dude. He fired the arrow before. You know how we invented flashed into it. Chrono Break, where we can go back in time. And watch like, it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I think, like, Shrench MP... He's in like invented Chrono Break. He's a time traveler. He can see the <laughs> yeah. future right now. He, he actually has pinpoint accuracy. He's like, all right, this is where you're going to be in five seconds. Yeah. Whew. Doctor Who, Doctor <laughs> Chuan Chuan P. This That's guy. Amazing. Holy cow! Zero and five. What shots that he's landing? But <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> You were literally just saying, okay, the only thing that can move around for T.O.P. is Marin. Then OMG just kill Marin. Down. He's a moving they target. They still nail him down. What on earth do T.O.P. do now? Just sit back and try and defend the Baron? Hunker down and try to scale Look, into late I, I game? I want to see how Marin plays after this. Because okay. Marin has to be thinking to himself, I'm Mundo. I go where I please. And he's like, huh. And then he eats a face full of arrow. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. He even predicted my flash. Oh my <laughs> god. So I think T.O.P., they're just... They're going to be pushed in so far in terms of the map. Like, there's so many things OMG can do. I think they're going to take another Cloud Drake. And once they group up on Baron, I don't see how T.O.P. can really contest. They're going to have to take a lot of guesses, poke their heads into those brushes to even be near to it. That's not something that seems like a very tasty idea for OMG when there's Tom Kench, Ash, Nocturne, and Vladimir. Already, Xiong has been pulled towards that mid lane just in case they wanted to hunt for a pick, but OMG are just denying vision everywhere. I think uh, they're going to wait for Icon to fully charge onto his Spellbinders. If yeah. it goes to 100, it gives you 160 extra AP and 50 movement speed as well. With those stats, you could instantly pop Lucian. I don't think there's anything Lucian can do. So we should keep track of the stacks and wait for, till it's full. Then that's when OMG is going to strike. Up to 60 now, only 40 away from the full charge on that. And OMG will be able to obliterate just about anyone with the massive burst damage. But gosh, Swan Chuan P, he's just, he's in their heads in a way that is was previously thought impossible. He's emoting, he's got the spam, he's got the trash talk, he's got the arrows. Chocho, his finger is shaking on top of the flash key right now. Yeah, you remember how Frostgarden was saying this is the warm-up game? This is pretty much like the three-point shooting contest at yeah. All-Stars. Yeah, it's <laughs> right before like the uh, the big guns come out and play, your clear loves, your mystics. But, man, a lot of the times, the, uh, the three-point shooting contest actually has more views. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really cool to see. Did he just do a double front flip into that three-pointer? Did he just land that arrow from across the map? I'm not sure which oh, is more yes, impressive. So quick maths right there. He's up quick to like maths. 86, 86 or 84 percent. Five out of six. Yeah. Uh, so 33 divided by two, 16, 84 percent. Ish. That's that's some napkin math for you. But now Xiong, he's able to keep Marin pushed up. 
Marin is playing defensive. We said we wanted to follow up on what this Mundo does. Well, he's sitting back next to his tier two because he doesn't want to die again. He can't maneuver freely around the map. There's the dragon that you were talking about being taken by OMG. But this is T.O.P. just pinned down, not only by the arrows, but the threat of the arrows from Chuan Chuan P. Yeah, the early game was carried by Icon in his individual play, but everything after that, the catches have come from Chuan Chuan P. Uh, it's just it's just amazing to see this. Now you get this guy was sitting on the RNG bench for most of Spring Split. Understandable mm -hmm. since that team does have Uzi, but uh, we always Able wanted to see him Y4. play. Yeah, yeah. It's really good to see RNG spreading the love into the league. You know, giving Y4 over to another team and also letting Shinshin P join into OMG. So far, he's been doing great. All we have to see. Aside from those picks is really how he positions himself in team fights because that's the big problem they had with Chelly. On OMG, everyone wants to go forward. No one wants to protect Chelly. But if pro Chelly doesn't get any protection, he's actually very prone to die. He's not a self-sufficient ADC in that sense. So I do want to see how he performs, especially on a pick like Ash, who does not have mobility. Well, we see him actually pushing up with Icon right now while the rest of his team scouts out and tries to secure vision around Baron. Bit of a bit of a dicey situation if he ends up getting flashed on by that Braum, but just constantly stepping up, keeping T.O.P. on their toes. Marin actually got the chance to push in bottom as Xiong was grouped with his team. That means he briefly has a moment to swing around and try to gain a better position on the map, but all too soon that moment is gone. And OMG are clearing out behind the Baron, trying to deny some wards. It does look like Marin is looking for a flank right here, but his two of his members are split up in the top lane. There's no way that this is going to work. So Marin caught off in no man's land pretty much, and T.O.P. are just going to straight up give over a tower. Yeah, the mid-tier two broken down as the four-man roam squad of OMG walk up and break it down. Chocho was there with Cat. They had the culling ready to try and clear out the minion waves, but Tron Tron P just stepping up yeah. forced T.O.P. back. They are so petrified of being caught. Frankly, this does not help their cause. Without that second mid tower, they're now pushed back even further, and I think that was Goong's responsibility to rotate towards mid. You can let your jungler take some farm, but you need to be there to actually defend the objectives. Graves, while he does have better wave clear, he doesn't have the petrifying gaze to really push uh, the enemy team away. So we're seeing kind of uh, the pressure cracking down onto T.O.P. and them actually making a few uh, rotational mistakes here. Yeah, this could very well cost them if they continue to make these mistakes. Goon shows himself solo in the top lane as he deals with the bannered minion placed by five a few moments ago. But take a look at the items picked up by OMG. Morello's oh. has been finished for Icon. He's at 100 stacks on that Spellbinder. He is ready to unleash health in terms of damage. And now double BF sword, Tron Tron P is looking for that infinity edge. Meanwhile, Chocho's bottom. T.O.P. could be looking for a pick onto Xiong. This is a Will smart he make look, the mistake though? There's no reason Xiong should walk into river. Absolutely none. Like what does he gain from walking into river? Oh, oh no. no. He walks up and places the keg. Oh no. Marin is there. That's the second one. The moment he clears out those kegs, it's go time. He's Marin doesn't even wait for it. Does have the move. Xiong flashes, he's caught. That's the Cullen, oh, he gets, gets good damage onto Chocho. Cullen can't catch up, and the Paranoia. They're coming Here comes in the, the arrow, arrow onto Marin. Xiong is there to the rescue. Marin is going low as Mountain dashes in to save his gangplank. And OMG stem the tide. And Clement, that's six out of seven. <laughs> Saved by the arrow again. Shenshin P basically the Robin Hood of League of Legends. Now, I have to say, that was still a mistake on Xiao. There is no reason for him to step up. Absolutely none. Nobody's seen on the map. You can't assume that everyone is in their base. You need their lanes pushed to, to make that assumption. And he does pay the price for that in terms of his cannon barrage and his, uh, and his arrow flash and as well. The flash and yeah. the paranoia. So, so it's a lot of pick now missing for at least a brief moment. Yeah, so actually Icon, uh, this move actually does set OMG behind a little bit. They don't want to use those ultimates on saving Xiang at all. Probably going to wait for all of those cooldowns to come back on, especially the paranoia, and then look to rush Baron. Or, or they could just go. For it. They're, they're missing a lot of things here. 
They're right behind it. That's the blue trinket spotting out the Baron. Cat rushes up. It's five versus five. A great oh, barrel. Three -man and Icon barrel. is in the back line. Look at that. He's got the Hemo Plague. He's hunting down XX. Stopwatch resets it. Meanwhile, Shuan Chuan P is going in with Xiong on the bottom half of the map, but it's a little bit too deep. Icon they still gets the kill. Marin. He's able to finish off XX. Marin is too tanky, like you said. Cho Cho lands the calling. Mountain goes low, but is still alive. In the end, it's one for two as OMG bite off way too much. Oh, wow. TOP is actually finding themselves back into the game right now. Their composition is very strong on 5v5, especially on that Baron side. But can the pick from OMG do anything? Uh, nope, spot it out here. Yeah, I, I really didn't think that was a good idea. They were missing way too many ultimates for that to be a safe play. Even though the triple barrel was good, I think Icon went in way too far, and you could see the positioning from Marin able to zone out multiple members. He didn't even lose his life. Mm. Uh, this so is just very tanky. Yeah, yeah. The, they barrel. at least needed to wait for the paranoia. If the paranoia was there, none of TOP mem members could have walked into the river. So this is just this is just weird play from OMG. Yeah, it's, a, it's really rushed. A great exhaust out of Cat caught Icon the moment he emerged from the Tides of Blood to deny a large portion of that damage percentage. He had the Spellbinders running, he had the Hemo Plague, he was ready to just destroy XX and Chocho, but didn't get the opportunity as his damage was shriveled up by that exhaust. But now, he's back onto the map, he's immediately charging that Spellbinders up once again. And hey, if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> Try, try again. It takes a long time to charge <laughs> up your spellbinders, though. That thing does not charge quick at all. Yeah. It takes a hundred stacks, and those are only from spells. Hundred spell casts. Yep. Up to 46 so far as he is just rotating through those buttons as quick as he can. 51. Wow, look at it go. He's just pushing those buttons on spam. And Infinity Edge has been finished off by Xuan Xuan P, so he does have Permafrost, but this is an Infernal Dragon that's spawned. should not try to contest this. They're trying to step up. Cannon Barrage, Arrow, misses that time. But the Dragon is also picked up by T.O.P. Do they continue to stay for the fight? This is actually a dream scenario for T.O.P. And I like what OMG are doing. Instead of taking the 5v5, they're rotating around, pushing all the vision away from the Baron Pit, and then, excuse me, gonna force T.O.P. to walk blind into their jungle again. This is a much better move. T.O.P., remember, they do want to fight straight up 5v5s. Ooh. Icon Ooh. was looking for a pick. He's going back? Yeah, I think that was actually well, that was the Spellbinders awesome. that he just used to try and back away. So once again, going to reset those stacks back down to zero is OMG. Try to find T.O.P. out of position, but they don't get caught. And this is just kind of sad from OMG. Like They had all the cards, but they could never play them in the right sequence. Yeah. So what we're seeing is Icon again and again have to recharge his entire Spellbinders. ADAP is no joke. That's... Mm -hmm. uh, that's more AP than a needle, uh, that's the same amount of AP as a needless rod. So it's basically over a thousand gold in your pocket straight away. You do want to charge it up for team fights. And just watching them fumble it three times in a row, it's a little bit depressing. We're seeing a little bit of the old OMG come back. And I think this is what we were hoping not to see today from OMG, bringing in Chuan Chuan P with Mountain making those aggressive shot calls in the early game to find XX, to find Goong in the mid lane. That being said, they are playing their side lanes a lot more intelligently, so it might not be the team play that they're focused on in this game. They're constantly keeping Marin pushed up in a side lane. They're responding appropriately to their top tier one. You can see Icon's on his way over there right now. And they're not letting themselves lose to any split push pressure from T.O.P. The only problem is they're not necessarily playing a split push team. T.O.P. have got the Cassiopeia Lucian. They are ready for a team fight. Yep, T.O.P. just need to wait for that big 5v5. But that, that has to happen sometime in the game. Let's see if Marin can actually steal this away. Oh, nope. close. The critical hit from Chuan Chuan P locks it down. But still, the tier one is now being pushed up. T.O.P. are ready to fight back. Essence Reaver, Black Cleaver, Blade of the Ruined King for Cho Cho. Goom, despite being stalled out, has finished off his Zanyas and ascended that Archangels. He is ready for business. Yep, Chocho will be the main target here uh, from OMG. With his mobility, you do want to lock him down first. And the other members you can kind of clean up later. Uh, what I do want to see OMG do is actually try to bait the Baron. They have a very easy way to escape the Baron pit with those barrels set up. They could do it in the pixel brush. And they bait the Baron, they bait the teleport, T.O.P. comes in, they proc a couple barrels back off, and then suddenly T.O.P. doesn't have the TP anymore. And they can go in again. And at this speed, they actually rush Baron incredibly fast. So I do want to see them take a bit more proactive moves, not try to fight up the ramp, but try to draw T.O.P. down the ramp. Hmm. 
Well, they will certainly have to try to, but T.O.P., that's going to be like pulling a turtle out of its shell with how defensive they've been playing this game, only stepping forward once they have three items on their primary carries. Marin is level 18. He's already at three items, going on four. Looks like that Sunfire Cape is next. And I just want to know if he goes the jerk style uh, Mundo build where he gets the Phantom Dancer sixth item. <laughs> for increased damage reduction to make him even harder to kill, or if he decides to go for like a support style item for the team, because right now, Marin, he's already having such difficulty dying yeah. in these fights. I think he all ends on the team fight, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, you usually want to go with a Phantom Dancer if you want to split push. And yeah. You can actually do that quite often on Mundo. He does, he's very hard to kill late game, and he does work well into compositions like the, uh, the game plank, basically. But at this point, I think Xiang's already pretty fed as well. Yeah. And they're finally going for what I was talking about, setting this up. And they have the paranoia to close it down as well. They're trying to. That's the paranoia. XX he actually backed back away. Off. He expects it was a pick, but no, it, the Baron was a pick. Oh, OMG finally find an opening, and Marin takes the bait teleport. Oh, that's actually huge. That feels really bad for yeah. T.O.P. They pushed the wave up, but all of that momentum they were starting to get is stalled out. OMG are back on the map with a lead. 9,000 gold ahead with that Baron take. So let's be honest, this could have happened about six or seven minutes early ago, but OMG finally got it. They clicked. It's like, hey, if we just force the teleport, we can do it again. So there really is no losing scenario right there. Uh -huh. And I like how they went for it directly. Um, and you can see the, the, the problem when Paranoia comes down is that the enemy jungler has to back away. Like, nobody is actually going to walk forward as their first instinct when Paranoia comes down. There was a chance that XX could actually steal it with his uh, collateral damage, but yeah. I just don't think it's in anyone's repertoire to react Whoa. that way. Immediately flashes away as OMG try to contest over the wolf camp and take it. Marin was able to split push and take a tier one, but without teleport, he has to defend right now. His last remaining tier two is already broken. 10,000 gold advantage for OMG. They've got Baron for two minutes. They've got a pick composition. But how's their siege? How's their ability to break this in hit line? We do have to look at Xiang because his barrels do outrange the enemy composition quite heavily. Instead, Mountain going for a cheesy paranoia. Yeah, he ends up getting slowed down by Gung's Rylize and has a difficult time walking out of this. Still not able to break it. Chuan Chuan P still pushing bottom, but he's split from his team. Marin, effectively between the two, prevents them from pushing back against that next inhibitor. And there's no one defending that Mr. top minion. What are you doing here? Elder Dragon is up in 10 seconds, and T.O.P. are on that side of the map. Recall was just finished from Xiong and Icon. Nobody is still getting that wave. It's still pushing into the top tier two, and T.O.P. are moving up to the Elder Dragon. I, I was just praising for OMG for their side wave control, but this could cost they're them. They're going to go for it. They're this turning. is T.O.P.'s way back into the game. Even down 10k, they have the T5 composition to Teleport it. behind them. Five is getting back in, along with Xuan Xuan P. It's down. That's the camera oh, on Goom. Oh, he's going to be tagged, but goes Golden Cat. Steps in to save it. Blade of the Ruin King. Cat is low. Great Chuan Chuan P Xiang. saved, but five with the save. Gets him out of the way. Icon goes in. That's going to be the Hemo play. Goon goes low. Tags Cat on three. goes golden. Goon is dead. XX is dead. OMG are winning the fight. It's going to take a miracle for T.O.P. to turn it back around. Chocho -cho goes in, but just in time to die. Elder Dragon is finished off, and OMG find four kills. Looking for the ace. And OMG are looking for closing out the game. They don't care about the Marin oh, Mundo no, at right. all. Yeah, he can go wherever he pleases, but he's not going to be able to defend his Nexus Tower. <laughs> Terrible positioning from T.O.P. right there. So half of their team was trying to chase to the right side, while two of their members were trying to hold out people on the left side of the map. They managed to do neither, and Goon even misses a crucial petrifying gaze on Icon. Icon has been outplaying this man the entire game so far, and it's just, it's a bit sad to watch. TOP were so close, but OMG gonna clean this out. Yeah, they turn onto the Nexus and break it down. 40 minutes in, OMG take game one over TOP. Unfortunately, T.O.P. unable to make their winning lanes and also their winning jungler work for themselves in the early game. Icon able to outplay his opponents, and then when it came to pick time, Mountain and Shen Shen P were on the job, able to go in without a moments of hesitation and with incredibly high accuracy. Oh yeah, so I counted six out of eight arrows that he hit. If he fired one more in that last team fight, I think that makes him seven out of nine, slightly better than a 75% ratio. Oh, 77%. Which Damn. is... 
nothing to scoff at. Uh, especially in a professional level of play where we're playing with the best of the best. People flash on reflex to dodge these things, but T.O.P. They were not prepared. Look at that damage dealt out of Xuan Xuan P. Out damaging Icon, nearly out damaging a six item gangplank. Yeah, and they team fought very well in that last game, uh, in that last fight towards the Elder Pit, able to dish out the damage and then rely on his own support to get him out of the fight. Very good play from Five doing that as well. And they split up T.O.P. T.O.P.'s composition, they're a one-directional composition. Their big AoEs only go one way. They want to stand up and face uh, OMG in a line, but they weren't able to do that. The coordination was not there and they fell apart. They did have a chance to come back into the game. For OMG side, I do wish that they played this game faster. They had such a big lead, but they fumbled it multiple times, especially yeah. with the Spellbinder time. They, they had a few stumbling blocks that they struggled with, but still a good performance from OMG overall. For now, though, we're going to Enchanted Crystal Arrow our way <laughs> to the analyst desk. <laughs> <laughs> Really? You're going to give him that one? I had to. That was an awful joke. Why not? <laughs> yeah, so you're trying to, like, save you dig deep? Look, I'm a friend of his. Why not? I can't <laughs> keep it down. Yeah, I'm going to bust that one. It's fine. We'll work it out. Uh, Raz, I hate to say it. All right. It actually hurts to come out of my mouth. I want to hear it. We were both wrong. But you were more wrong. What? I said, tell me who was going to step up for OMG, and the first name out of your mouth was Chelly. Yes. And I said, how can you talk about the ADC on OMG? They have never been about their ADC, even back for, you know, the 2014 OMG days. Look. And then this god shows Look. up. Schwan Schwan god. I didn't expect to see an AD carry coming out of OMG since SMLZ. I would expect them to be like, all right, it's all about Icon now. It's it. We're never going to see... And even though it's just one game, that was a damn good game! What the hell? We haven't seen Shuan Shuan P since, like, Vichy days, where he was with Mata. I but tried to just block out all of those memories. Apparently, Mata left a scroll. He says, read this scroll, take it to the mountaintops, come back when you're ready. And he was damn ready, because not only did he hit this one, he hit the next one mid lane. And I promise you he'll hit the one after that in our B-roll package. Yes, because it just doesn't stop. You really think it would at some point. But he hits it with such incredible accuracy that you just really don't believe it. That you would expect one of the referees to stop the game and just to check his mouse. You, to you see that, if he's back in. <laughs> you know that those aren't you know, targetable ability. That's a skill shot. He has, he has to aim that one. It's not like a guided missile. I mean, this takes guided missile composition to a completely different level right now between these types of ma magnetic arrows and Nocturne. It's beautiful. And so the, the fact, I will say, taking a step back, because you need the vision of the whole game. The fact that this game was even somewhat close because T.O.P. found instances where they were looking to challenge Elder Dragon means that OMG still has a lot of game to improve on. But... For individuals like Swan Swan P to come in like that, that's in that's incredible. So yeah, it looks like going into game two, a lot of focus is going to be on that. Now this is the thing. The, there's the player. We've we've given Swan Swan P his yes. dues. He also then did take man of the match. But let's kind of break down the champion Ash because Ash has been creeping up in the LCK. She's been showing up in the LPL quite a bit. RNG was really the champion that started it. So kind of walk me through not just Ash but all these other crit ADCs because the joke is, you know, back to 2017 ADC. Lol. Guess what? Best ADC one world. Yeah. And yeah. now 2018, excuse me, MSI, 2018 ADC, lol, they don't exist. Boom. A lot of, a few of them coming through. Ash is interesting immediately because when Chelly was playing, he came in with the Ash pick as well. So it seems okay. like OMG wants to have the utility in the AD carry. But a lot of question is, what early game do you have with crit getting changed where you really don't get much uh, bang for your buck until the third item break point? But for these three AD carries, they find that early game item. So for Ash, Blade of the Rune King in towards the Zeal item in this last game it was Runan's Hurricane, Infinity Edge. A few of them a few of them be going towards Guardian Angel. But then you see Uzi in the last day, yesterday, Essence Reaver first one, because I mean, of course, Zaya is starting out with her ulti to begin with. And then so she gets the kit. More CC throughout the kit. Exactly. So she has a lot of damage coming off of her E, off of the feather dance she has. And then for Tristana, we saw Chocho, who's playing OMG. When they went up against WE, come up with Tristana and immediately Storm Razors, you don't get to see it unless if it's Draven, but the one audio attack means that you have a lot of ambush potential with the pick. So just to translate, you know, some of the, the words that you're saying into just plain English, you're saying that it's 
the changing of the itemization that makes use of the champion's kit. So it's yes. no longer about the crit damage, it's about what these champions now can offer in terms of jumping on people, the hard CC, throwing out the arrows. It's incredibly important because for a lot of these crit AD carries, they left a large hole in the early game because Infinity Edge used to be that, at the very least, you can get the first two items, the recipe, you can build into it much earlier on, but now because it is, quite honestly, one of the worst early game items you can get, because it only really provides you the AD AD, and the passive really just depends on how much crit you currently have, you have to hold on to it. You, you can't build it outright. So until maybe in the future that gets changed, currently a lot of AD carries, if they want to pick these champions for the kit that they have, they have to start building properly for it. Well, again, if we want to see this ADC again, which I definitely want to see it on the map, it has to be picked up by Schwan Schwan P. He was our man of the match, taking home on that Ash and proving that it's not a, just about the utility, it's also about the damage percentage. Yes, he was basically support Ash, 009, but that's 30% of a damage share, which isn't something we're seeing from the ADCs, and Chelly just the other day did like 51% damage share on Ash. Yeah, and honestly, a lot of what Schwan Schwan did this game is not even something you could put into statistics because that was just phenomenal play out of phenomenal play and when we're talking about the success of ash rates you'd look towards fury who's an ash player and he would set up for it he would find the shortest range in which you can't see him because they'd have a control ward properly placed or behind the mid lane wave to shoot the ash arrow there's no prep he doesn't need a damn thing he will sit his butt in the bottom Good lane save. there we go and he'll throw <laughs> like ash the arrows because they'll be able to get it <laughs> Okay, that's it. We are going to see how this series pans out because it is a best of three. So right on the other side of this break, we will see OMG versus TOP game two.